All right, we're just over a month into the new year. We passed the halfway point of the season. All the big leagues have already passed their breaks. The transfer window was closed, and we're just days away from the UCL knockouts. That means it's time for the first episode of The Catch-Up, because Lord knows I don't got time to make a video where every single time something new happens. Even right now, I got a five-page paper to write, and I'm using this as an excuse to procrastinate. We're not going to talk about that, though. Let's, let's move on. A lot of shit been going on, but first and foremost, Mbappe has once again allegedly decided to go to Real Madrid. <sighs> How many times they gonna report this shit, bruh? At this point, he just fucking with Madrid fans on purpose. Honestly, if I was in his shoes, I would take it a step further. I would get like four different news sources and tell each one I'm going to a different team, watch the whole football world descend into chaos just to end up re-signing. It would be fucking hilarious. But for real though, if he does re-sign, it might actually be the dumbest thing ever. I'm not a fan of the media bias that Real Madrid gets, but it's pretty obvious that to take his career to legendary status, that's the way to go. Look at what going to Madrid has done for Bellingham. They're without a doubt the hugest club in the history of the sport. Me personally, I think he should bring his ass over to Arsenal. That's just me though. Saliba, I need you to get in that sweatshop. Start putting in that work. You're the only French agent we have, my boy. Cook something up. Let me stop being delusional. That motherfucker ain't stepping foot in London. Chelsea fans, don't say a word. Don't even speak. It's not happening. If Mbappe is dead ass lying about going to Madrid again, it would be the funniest shit ever. Why does he keep self-sabotaging his career? He's already wasted the beginning of his prime. It's time to pack it up. He's never going to win a Ballon d'Or or UCL playing in France. Messi was a complete outlier. In other news, Danny Alves is apparently broke as hell on top of being a rapist, which is quite possibly the worst combination of things on the planet. How did he even get to negative 17,000? That's my question. Them lawyer fees must be beating his ass. At some point, you just gotta let it go and head to the cell, buddy. It's over. Give it up, amigo. I don't really know the exact details of his case, but for him to actually be in jail and denied bail as a professional football player shows that they think that shit is pretty concrete. Athletes normally have a pretty easy time escaping justice when they do terrible shit. And he was married? <sighs> Man, he going straight to hell. Recently, they announced that they're adding Sim Benz to football, which is, I don't know, interesting, I guess. I don't really see the purpose, to be honest. This is just going to be another thing for everybody to whine about when their team loses a game. You already got motherfuckers clinging to imaginary referee bias week in and week out just to justify why their team got mollywopped. I'll be seeing people trying to blame refs, then I look at the score and it's 5-1. Boy, go to bed, what the fuck? You added Sim Benz? Man, I can already hear him. We win by three if Garnacho didn't get sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes in the first half. We win by five if Enzo didn't get sent to the sin bin for a bullshit call. You don't know how momentum works. Man, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit, bruh. It's going to be worse for us Arsenal fans because, be honest, there's a lot of people in our own fan base who genuinely think we can't lose a game unless the ref is against us. The excuse is going to start flying every week. Ugh. My God. It's already bad enough sometimes trying to convince them that maybe we lost the game just because we played like crap. We can never beat the delusional allegations, bruh. Barcelona is still using child labor to keep their club alive. To be fair, it's actually working and it's been working for years. So, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> See what I... Okay, never mind. In all seriousness, though, Lamine Yamal is the most disgusting 16-year-old maybe ever. People going to look at the one goal and two assists in the league and act like he not shaking some, but he's literally out there baptizing men twice his age. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. If I'm a defender with a wife and kids and a motherfucker who just grew pubic hair start flaming me in front of a whole nation, them shins are cooked. I'm simply not going out like that. I refuse. Give me your ankles. I'll take that trip to the sin bin and come right out and do it again. Got me fucked up. It's not even just your mall. Vitor Roque, I'm, I really I really hope I'm saying it right. I think I heard them say it on TV and it was like, Roque? Is it Roque or Roque? I, you know what? We won't call him Rocky. It's not even just Yamal. Rocky, a.k.a. the Brazilian Bow Wow, about to have Lewandowski unemployed as fuck if he keeps it up. Lua, I love you, Rody, but you stink. It's time to hang them cleats up. He's underperforming his non-penalty expected goal total by four goals. I'm going to say that again. By four goals. One more time. Four goals. In case some of y'all didn't hear me. By four goals. In other words, he's washed and actively dragging Barca backwards. This is Celtic Shaq. This is Wizards MJ. Manchester United seems to finally be gaining some steam. They didn't lose at all in January, and Manu gave their fans something to get hyped about with that winner over Wolves. 
What a game that was. Too bad they're still managed by Skinny or Walter White. <laughs> On the other side of town, City has begun their annual reign of terror. I've personally just accepted that they're going to win the league at this point. The yearly pump fake has passed without anyone taking a big enough lead to suggest otherwise. They have a fully healthy squad. KDB is back. Phil Foden is bugging out as he has been all year. I mean, like, what can you really do? Leverkusen is still undefeated and they got Bayern this weekend. Yeah, trust I will be tuned in. This is the biggest game of the year for them and they're going in without Kosunu, who's still at AFCON, Boniface, who's injured and would have still been at AFCON anyway, and Palacios. Not ideal, but I'm still behind them. Bayern has been real up and down in recent weeks and low-key all season two. Shabby, I'm begging. Please, bro, don't nobody want to see Bayern lift that trophy up. They're an evil empire, and Thomas Muller is the source of their power. I'm telling y'all, y'all got to lock in for real. Peep how he's been there for like 60 million years. He sold his soul to the football guys after losing to Dortmund back-to-back -back times, and now he can never lose the Bundesliga again. Lautaro Martinez is losing his mind in the city, uh, and nobody outside Italy cares. It's insane. He's already won into a trophy this season. He's averaging almost a goal a game in the city. Uh, he's comfortably one of the best strikers in the world. It's pretty silly to still have Osimhen over him, in my opinion. He's doing all this just to end up like 12th in the Ballon d'Or rankings. Them voters do not give one fuck about the Serie A anymore. He better drop like eight Copa America goals if he want the attention for real. There's been all types of refereeing controversies in La Liga in the first month or so of the year but i feel like the two biggest stories over spain so far in january and february are Girona starting to flicker out of the title race and madrid derby's getting more and more intense there's been like what three in the past two months and two of them were absolute bangers i wish i let it go on a few more games earlier this season so it could be an actual title race between them and real madrid they have a winning record against them this season and they've genuinely outplayed them on multiple occasions okay Power rank is time. These are the current power rankings as of February 9th, 2024. Power rankings aren't based on table positioning or strength of team alone. They're also based on how hot and in form a team is at the moment, as well as how good the team is and has been overall this year too. It's both, not just one. Honorable mention to AC Milan. They've been third in Serie A pretty much all season, but they've only lost once in their last 11 games in all competitions, and that was in the Italian Cup. They haven't lost a league game since early December, I think. In 10th, we have PSG comfortably at the top of League One, and they still only have one loss all season in the league. They've drawn three of their last 10, but at least there's no losing going on, and they'll still probably cruise to a League One title as they say goodbye to Mbappe. Only reason they're not higher is just the fact that most of the teams they're facing are doo-doo, let's be real. They barely scraped by in the UCL, and to climb higher, they need a dominant round of 16 performance. In ninth, I'm going to put Girona. Yes, they've slowed down in recent weeks, dropping points three times since late December and taking their second loss of the season in the Copa del Rey to Mallorca, but they're still two points out of first in La Liga. Losing one La Liga game all season so far with the squad they have is crazy. PSG and Milan have more star power, but Girona places higher than them on this power ranking. Eighth goes to Arsenal. Our month-long dry spell is still having a lasting effect with us sitting in third, but we just beat first place Liverpool for our third straight win and we're two points off the top. Can't put them any higher because the three straight losses and one win in seven game stretch isn't that far in the rearview mirror, but the recent performances, especially the Liverpool game at the Emirates, they got them this high. Not higher than Juventus in 7th, though. Do I think Arsenal would beat Juventus? Yeah. But before their loss to the best team in Italy last weekend, Juventus hadn't lost a game since September. 6th place goes to Bayern. They're on an all-time great pace in terms of points in the Bundesliga, but it wasn't too long ago they let Frankfurt put 5 on their heads. And just a couple weeks ago, they got shut out by Werder Bremen. They'd normally be up pretty comfortably in the Bundesliga with that level of points right now, but Xabi Alonso had other ideas. Liverpool is fifth, and that might sound crazy because they're first in the Premier League, but three of the four teams in front of them don't have a loss yet this year. Liverpool losing their last game, an important one with Arsenal, and most likely losing the top spot soon since City has a game in hand is why they're fifth. Madrid is the last team on this list to have a loss this calendar year, and Atletico Madrid has been the only one that has had their number. They've won 10 of their last 12, and the only two games they didn't win was against them. They've taken back first place, and I kind of wanted to put them or Liverpool higher, but I've reserved the three spots for teams that haven't lost in 2024 yet. Leverkusen has looked noticeably weaker with their injuries, and one of their core defenders gone for AFCON, but they've still managed to win five of their six games this year and eight of their last nine overall. They're still unbeaten all season, and the only reason they're not first is because it's taken multiple very late goals to avoid dropping points and taking their first loss. The missing players are taking their toll, and they're not as dominant as they were earlier this season. Bayern this weekend is a season-shifting game. 
Second place is Inter Milan. They've won six straight, including a huge win over second place Juventus to remain first. They haven't lost a game since September, and they already have a trophy this year. First place, though, is going to go to Manchester City for very obvious reasons. KDB came back a little while ago, and Holland came back from the injury that kept him out a month. Their early season struggles are well in the past. Nine straight wins, 11 of the last 12. Man, let's give him the trophy. We know how this goes. Just another reminder that the power rankings don't mean a team is directly better than the other. There's other factors like the injuries a team is going through, their recent schedule, and if they're in form or not, like I said earlier. For Game of the Month, it's between United versus Wolves, Cameroon versus Gambia, and Real Madrid versus Atletico in the Copa del Rey. I'm going with United versus Wolves on this one just because Manu's winning goal was so nasty, I really thought they choked that. For Surprise Player of the Month, give me Connor Bradley. Came out of nowhere and just started cooking everybody. In his last four games, he has one goal and five assists. They literally just made another trend in the lab, and he's only 20. For Player of the Month, honestly, I'm going to give it to Vlahovic. He did get hurt against Inter, I think, but he had six goals and one assist in seven games. I'm aware he choked against Inter, but shh. The other candidates aren't too impressive, so we're just going to ignore that. Yeah, yeah, I know Mbappe has nine goals and five assists and what, like seven games so far this calendar year. But bro, be serious. Look at the teams he's playing. Two goals and two assists against Orleans. A hat trick and an assist against Revel. He's playing against a verb, bruh. The bulk of all those numbers came against a third and sixth division team. He'll be all right. Thanks for watching, y'all. UCL knockouts coming up. Everybody lock in. Arsenal about to do some damage, I'm telling you. I'm going to see y'all next time.